Hey there, and welcome back. Here we are with another Battle Zero Concept video. If you've been around my channel, you know roughly a year ago, I released my AR Battle Zero video where I compared the 25, the 36, the 50, and the 100 yard zero out of this 14 and a half inch upper out to 300 yards and provided you hard data on cardboard of how each of those different zeros performed with this upper in M193 ammunition. Now, one of the most common comments I got was around how different bullet weights perform using the various zeros out to distance. And that's exactly what we're gonna tackle in this video. So if you'd like to understand more around how different bullet weights are gonna perform, in this case, with a 36 yard zero out to distance, and stick around because this video is gonna be for you. So really quick, we're gonna move into a portion where we discuss what the battle zero concept is to make sure we're all on the same page and understand what we should be seeing in the data. And then we'll move down to the range where I'm gonna fire this upper with three different 5.56 pressure loads, M193, M855, and a Mark 262 clone. If you like the sounds of it, stick around. It's gonna be a ton of fun. At the end of the video, we'll review the results on cardboard. Now note, this video is one of four where I take a deep dive into how changing components on your rifle will impact the performance of your battle zero out to distance. The other three videos will look at things like optic mount height, removing and installing your suppressor, as well as the impact of barrel length on the performance of your rifle. Now that said, you gotta let me know in the comments, what do you think? Do you think we're gonna see a drastic difference in the 55, the 62, and the 77 grain out to distance? Let me know, I'd love to chat with you. Check me out here at the end of the video, we'll review the results. Before we take a deep dive into the different variables and how they impact your battle zero, let's take a couple of quick minutes and review the battle zero theory so that we all have a baseline of what we should be seeing in the data so that we can accurately understand what the variables are doing downrange. So when I say battle zero, this representation is gonna give you a look at what I'm referring to. So the horizontal line that's straight represents your line of sight. So that's you looking through your optic, that's always gonna be a straight line from your rifle, basically to infinity. Then down below, the arc represents the trajectory of your bullet. So for a battle zero, for instance, a 36 yard, 300 yard zero, what happens is your bullet's gonna start out below your line of sight, say inch and a half, two and a half, whatever it might be, depending on your optic mount height. It starts out below line of sight, comes out of the muzzle and it's gonna rise up to meet your line of sight. No, the bullet doesn't defy gravity. The barrel is essentially aimed up to meet line of sight. So where it meets line of sight here, that's your close zero, 36 yards, for example. So the bullet comes out of the muzzle, climbs to meet line of sight, then it goes above line of sight for some period of time before it falls back down to meet line of sight at what we would call your far zero. So a 36 yard might also be a 300 yard zero. So that's close zero, far zero. Then the bullet's gonna fall indefinitely below your line of sight. So when you're using a battle zero, the theory is put your sights in the center of a generous vertical target, and then if you don't know the range to that target, your impact should only be plus or minus a couple of inches from your line of sight within the range that we're going to define, say, in this video. So things to keep in mind, bullet comes out of the muzzle. It's going to rise to meet line of sight. It's above line of sight for some period of time before it falls back down. You have to ask yourself, how much error can you accept here above line of sight for your impacts? And then how much error can you accept below line of sight past your far zero? And with those numbers in mind, that's how we're gonna determine the rifle to use and get an accurate understanding of how changing different variables are going to impact your performance. So for the bulk of this video, I'm going to zero at 36 yards. So this is gonna be known 36 yard zero. Then as I change my variables, we're gonna see on cardboard at 100, say 200 and 300 yards, what my bullet is actually doing. So the theory on a 36 yard zero is that my bullet should really only be above line of sight about three to three and a half inches, and then below line of sight three to four inches out to about 300 yards. That's gonna allow me to hold center and make those impacts. But what I think you're gonna see in this video, as I change things like optic mount height, barrel length, suppressed versus unsuppressed, and different bullets, we're gonna see the above and below line of sight numbers change. What that's an indication of is changing of our far zero. So if we know we're zeroed at 36 yards, what we see in the data above and below is gonna indicate where our far zero is. And with that, we then have to ask ourselves how much error can we accept 
say it's only three or four inches, then you would know with your setup at a 36 yard zero, you can shoot out to X distance. Maybe it's only 275 yards to get that plus or minus three or four inches to make your impacts. So maybe your setup or changing these variables, rather than being a 36, 300, it might actually just be a 36, 250 or a 36, 275 based on the trajectory of our bullet and how much error we can accept. So that said, let's move into testing the different variables. I think it's going to be really fun to see how each of these different items are going to change the performance of our bullet downrange. So here we go. So my original Battle Zero video that I put out last year, I shot all of the different zeros using M193 ammunition. Many of you left comments asking how different bullet weights would perform out to distance with the various Battle Zeros. What I intend to do in this portion of the video is give you that data. So what we're going to do here is fire three different 5.56 pressure loads on cardboard at 100, 200, and 300 yards to give you hard data of how each of those rounds perform out of my upper. Now details for this portion of the video. We're going to be firing my Colt SOCOM Block 2 14 and a half inch upper. This is a 1 and 7 twist barrel with a surefire suppressor. So this is probably very representative of what many of you might be running for a fighting type rifle. The optics package, really cool, I'm really excited about this, is Ally Munition stepped up and actually provided this Athlon 1 to 10 in the Reptilia AUS 39 millimeter or 1.54 inch mount. Now if you've been around my channel, you know Ally Munitions has been a great partner. I'm very thankful for their support. I'd ask that when you make your next purchase, don't forget to check out Ally. Really cool is they are trying out a new kind of optic mounting solution. So they actually mounted this optic in the mount, properly torqued it, leveled it. So all I had to do was take it out of the box and slap it on my upper, made it really easy, very confident that the scene is installed properly. So that's something to check out from Ally coming soon. Now for the actual ammo we're gonna fire, the three different loads will be a 55 grain M193 MEN load. This is the same stuff I shot last year, performs very well out of this rifle. I've also got IMI. M855, 62 grain penetrator ammunition that will fire out of this rifle. And then finally, I've got some old Silver State Armory, 556 pressure, 77 grain open tip match. I bought this years ago. I actually used to shoot this uh, in a competition upper that I had. It shoots very well. Don't know how it's gonna perform out of this upper, but there's one way to find out, and that's to shoot it. The shooting portion, we're gonna fire a 36 yard zero across the board, and we're gonna shoot data at 100, 200, 300 and I'll shoot 55, 62, and 77. From here, let's fire the rifle up. 55 grain ammo, 100 yard line, 36 yard zero, shooting the bottom left dot. Yeah, they're definitely stacking in there about maybe a mil high or so, as best I can see. All right, 200 yards. 200 yards with the M193, left column, middle dot. All right, 300 yards. 55 grain M193 at 300 yards. Upper left dot. A decent left to right, but I'm just gonna hold center on the dot. All right, there's our five rounds. Let's swap over to the 62 grain and repeat the course of fire. We've swapped over to the 62 grain, M855, zeroed at 36 yards, and now I'm at the 100 yard line. 
and we're going to shoot the middle dot on the bottom row. So from what I can see, those are stacking in there about the same height as the uh, 55 grainer. So let's push back to 200. 200 yards with the M855. I'm shooting the center column middle dot. Now you'll notice at the 200 and 300 yard line, I actually taped over my previous impacts from the 55 grainers just so we don't get things confused. So with that, let's go ahead and put our rounds on target. That's our five rounds. Can't really see them, but I uh, trust they're on cardboard. Let's push back to 300. 300 yards with the M855. I'm gonna shoot the middle dot on the top row. Again, we've got that pretty consistent left to right, but I'm gonna hold dead center of the middle dot. We'll see where they land. I can't really see those. You'll have to let me know in the comments what you're seeing, but let's swap over to the 77 grain and shoot it again. All right, I've swapped over to the Silver State Armory. 77 grain, 5.56 pressure ammunition, zeroed at 36 yards. We're here at the 100 yard line. I'm gonna put my first rounds on the bottom right dot. Looks like those are landing in there about the same height as the others, roughly a mil or a little bit under a mil high. From here, let's push back to 200. 200 yards with a 77 grain, 556 five, pressure ammunition, shooting the right column of dots, middle dot. Now, if you notice in the GoPro, I taped over the 62 grain impacts just to make sure we don't get them confused out here and uh, count the wrong bullets. So here we go. I can't see those, but from here we'll push back to 300. So we're back at 300 yards with the 556 pressure 77 grain ammunition. Now I'm shooting the top row of dots. There's a decent left to right wind out here. And both the 55 and the 62 grain ammo pushed right about a dot width. So I'm afraid if I shoot the top right dot where I should be, they're gonna push off of the cardboard. So I'm actually going to shoot the top left dot I've taped over all the impacts, so we'll be able to tell where these land, but hopefully it doesn't get too confusing. I do want to shoot and make sure I capture my impacts on the cardboard. So with that, upper left dot, and then we will take a close-up look and understand where everything landed.
All right. I feel like those are all on the cardboard. Now let's take a close-up look and review the difference between each of the three different bullet weights. The bullet weight comparison. This one I found really interesting because there's a ton of data that we can look at and take away from shooting each of these rounds side by side out to 300 yards. So let's take a couple of minutes and take a detailed look at the results that we found with each of these rounds. Remember we fired each round through this Colt SOCOM Block 2 upper 14 and a half inch barrel. We kept all variables the same except for the ammunition. So tried to be as fair as we could with this test. So ammunition wise, remember we started with a 55 grain M193 36 yard zero and we shot it up the left hand side. So what did we see for results? We got a five round group here at 100 yards that landed about three and a quarter inches high, just shy of a mil high. You think about the theory of the 36 yard zero, that's exactly what we would expect. We want those rounds, they're gonna land high. I moved out 200 yards, really quick, you're gonna notice there's a lot of tape on this target, but I'm gonna try to speak through what each impact is and illustrate my points with pictures that I'll show here as I speak. At 200 yards, I had a five round group which landed right here. I measured the center of that group, two and three quarter inches high. Again, in line with the theory, exactly what we would wanna see out of the 36 yard zero. Nothing really that extreme, just a couple inch difference here in point of aim versus point of impact. Yeah, it looks like there's either some windage error or remember we had some pretty tough left to right winds out there today that was pushing those bullets over. But uh, really the main point here is the elevation 2.75 high. Then we pushed out 300 yards where I was aiming here at the upper left dot and my impacts are right here under these blue pieces of tape. I measured the center of this group at six inches low. Yes, they're pushing to the right, there was a lot of wind, but the important piece is six inches low, roughly two MOA at 300 yards. So you think about that 36 yard, 300 yard zero theory, this is exactly what you're looking for. Your rounds are gonna be high at the intermediate distances, and then as you push out toward that far zero, your rounds are gonna to start to drop back down and you would need to factor that in as you shoot. Very decent groups here out of the 55 grain, pretty much call it two MOA across the board. Then we swapped over and shot the M855 62 grain rounds up the center. Five round group here at 100 yards, that also landed three and a quarter inches high, right in line with what we saw out of the 55. We moved out to 200 yards, where our group started to open up a little bit. You can see these five rounds right here that are taped. I called the center of this group in line with a 55 grain 2.75 inches high, and that's to be expected given velocities are pretty similar between those two rounds. Then as we pushed out to 300 yards, we saw a major difference in a couple of things. The first off being the group. This shot a very dismal group. There's a round here, 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 and here. So you look at the group right here, this is our M855 result for 300 yards. That's a 13 inch group across here. Four MOA, really not that impressive, but we can still illustrate what we want to out of this data. So if my aiming point was here, you can see the center of my rounds landed down here. I called them just a little bit lower than the 55 grainers at eight inches low. So almost three MOA low with the 62 grain rounds. Then we swapped over to the 77 grain 556 pressure ammunition and fired up the right hand side. 100 yard group, I called the center of this at 3.25 inches high. So our 100 yard performance with all three rounds is almost identical. At 200 yards, I felt like there was a little bit of difference here. I felt like the 77 grain rounds actually pushed a little bit higher. I measured the center of that group at four inches. And then at 300 yards, remember we had a strong left to right wind. So I actually aimed here with the 77 grain as well as the 55 grain. And those rounds landed four of them right here untaped, and then the fifth right here. So that's about a nine inch group in total. Three MOA, which isn't that great, but this flyer could have been me, could have been the wind, who knows. But for the bulk of this discussion, we'll look at these four rounds here. And I felt like those landed lower than the 55, lower than the 62s at about nine and a half inches low, below my point of aim. So as bullet weight increases, velocity decreases, and I felt like that really didn't show up in the data at 100 or really even 200 yards, but we really did start to see it out here at 300 yards. You can see each of the bullet weights start to drop lower, lower, and lower than the previous round that was fired. The other interesting piece is the windage deflection. So remember I fired the 55s 
aimed here, as well as the 77s aimed here. And if you look across the target, my five rounds of 55 landed just about exactly in line with where my 77s did. So pretty neat to be able to see the data side by side for each of the three rounds using the 36 yard zero. So you think about the theory of that 36 yard zero, being able to hold center in a generous vertical target and make impacts plus or minus your line of sight by a couple of inches. In my opinion, the 55 grain is gonna be the best at that with the most error being six inches at 300 yards. As you come across, you look at the 77 grain, we're pretty good out to 200, but as you push out toward 300, our drop is quite a bit more. So you could run your numbers in a ballistic calculator and likely find your 36 yard 77 grain zero is probably more like a 275, maybe a 270 yard zero. So closer distance to have that tighter dispersion between your point of aim and your point of impact. So when you're setting up your rifle, it's really important to understand the round you're firing and how far you wanna be able to shoot and how much error you can accept in your point of aim versus point of impact. Because as shown here, you will have differences with each of your different bullets. I would say the 55 grain holds tightest to the theory of 36, 300 out of a 14 and a half inch barrel. So let me know what you thought about this portion of the video. All right, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate you sticking around to check out this video. I hope you found some value in watching. You gotta let me know in the comments down below. Was there anything you saw in this video that surprised you? Or did the data you see match what you're already getting out of your rifle? Was there any takeaway that you saw here you want to go out and try on your setup? Let me know. Let's interact in the comments down below. Now that said, my channel's seen a ton of growth recently, and I appreciate each and every one of you that are engaging with my video, subscribing, and taking the time to watch. If you've made it this far, I want to ask for your help to continue growing. Leave me that comment down below, like the video, share with your friends, but most impactful would be to subscribe. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be in line for the next video drop that I've got just like this. Also, don't forget to check me out on Instagram at Mountain Smollett's America. It's another great place for us to interact. I can give you a sneak peek of what I'm working on. We can chat in the DMs. And that's where I come up with a lot of video ideas. So help me grow this channel. Hope you're there for the next video. Thanks for watching. and We'll see you next time.